Intermediate Financial Accounting 2, Financial Instruments, Complex Debt and Equity. The first topic in this chapter is financial instruments, specifically their classification. When classifying financial instruments, we are concerned with the substance of the transaction, not the legal form. Recall in a previous chapter that I discussed substance over form. What does this really look and feel like? Not what are the lawyers or the bankers calling it. Pure debt and pure equity instruments are fairly straightforward to classify. But there are instruments that are part debt, part equity called hybrid financial instruments, which are also called compound financial instruments. In a compound instrument, the portion that is debt and the portion that is equity are classified separately. The tax status of investments is unchanged by the accounting treatment as tax is set by the CRA. When classifying instruments, we need to look at payment arrangements. With debt, creditors typically have enforceable rights to receive payment, but with equity, Payment typically happens at the choice of the company. The following are a few examples of factors when considering whether or not to classify an instrument as debt or as equity. Are there periodic cash payments made to the investor? With debt, we're looking again at that obligation to pay. The company doesn't choose whether or not it wants to pay interest. Whereas within equity, the company generally gets to choose when to pay dividends. When looking at a factor of whether or not to repay principal, under debt, the company is obliged to repay the, um, the, the repayment back, the original amount loaned, uh, as in the repayment of the principal. And with equity, this is paid only if the company wishes under a share repurchase or upon dissolution of the company. Let's look at an example. Retractable preferred shares. These are shares the owner can sell back to the company at a set price. JBC Corp has issued retractable preferred shares with an issue price of $52 per share. The share is entitled to a cumulative dividend at a fixed rate of 3.2% per annum and can be redeemed, retracted, at the option of the holder. How would this financial instrument be classified? Usually, as we've seen in a previous chapter, preferred shares are accounted for as equity. However, in this case, the holder has the ability to force the company to pay them $52 for each share. Further, the dividend is cumulative, that is, must be paid. If not in a particular year, then the cumulative amount is paid the next year. This means the holder is entitled to those cash flows. The company is obliged to pay. As a result, these shares are a liability for accounting purposes, as in substance, they are in debt. Let's look at a question. ABC Corp has issued perpetual debt. The creditor receives annual cash payments of interest, but the principal must never be repaid unless the company is liquidated. How is this instrument accounted for? Should it be A, all equity, B, all liability, C, part liability for the interest and part equity for the principal, or D, part liability for the principal and part equity for the interest. The correct answer is B, all liability. This is because the company is obliged to pay the interest each year and cannot avoid repayment, as ultimately the company will be will be liquidated, whether in one year or a thousand years, this instrument is entirely a liability. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.